so when you go on social media and you see anything pertaining to a spiritual awakening you only see the fluff of it and a few people have been speaking about this lately and i don't know i just been like really i'm always always thinking about things contemplating things analyzing things analyzing myself and just really like digging to the deeper meaning of everything and while it is good to get those healthy spiritual practices um there is another side to it and this video like i don't even know if i should post this because like whatever followers i have you know it's a new channel don't have many followers just yet but i don't want to like scare people off from a spiritual awakening and it is the best thing that you can do for yourself and at times a lot of times we have no control over it it just happens and um i've heard it said that spirit will take you kicking and screaming it will you want to be the one to facilitate this whole thing you do not want to be dragged through it um because you could if you are resisting the things that spirit is asking of you what was a part of your plan not that you can't create a new path and go in a whole nother direction um, there are just some things there are a lot of things that you have to let go of that um cannot go along with you on this path and that's pretty much mainly what i want to speak about um i will speak from my own perspective starting a spiritual journey for me and what i have heard from a lot of others in the very beginning feels like you're going insane because it really is spiritual and i just remember feeling like i was having like some type of mental breakdown this was years ago I was in my very early 20s, maybe 21, 22, I'm 36, almost 37 now. But I was very much aware. I started questioning life. And as I started to feel this awareness, it was like um, I could just feel the spirit realm. I could feel that there was something else with us, among us, that we could not see with the naked eye. I felt it though. And it drove me insane because I was one of those kids that grew up watching scary movies in a room in the dark by myself. So everything that we know about spirituality, spirits, and all that, like, it's always been dark stuff. So. That's what you feel when you start, when you come close to anybody who's talking about the spirit realm. It's like, oh, that's dark. I don't know if I want to deal with that. You know, but it's not, not at all. And, and that's another thing I want to speak about. Like, people's idea of spirituality and it being like this dark thing. Oh, you practice witchcraft. They always connected to like black magic witchcraft and all that which so yeah um magic is a part of it because in a lot of ways we are very magical you don't have to choose to witchcraft and black magic and all that other stuff there i consider myself a very spiritual person however i do not sit up in here and do um dark magic towards other people but when you come across people who are not familiar with spirituality having a spiritual having spiritual practices without necessarily um right being like a religious non-religious spiritual person 
they always, always, always feel that you are a person who practices like magic. But people are so unaware that we all practice magic, knowingly and unknowingly. Um, just the words that we say, the things that we do, sometimes we put spells on ourselves and others without even realizing it. When you're having sex, you're practicing magic. It's magic. So, we just have to ha shift our perspective when it comes to what magic is. And a lot of times people are told things, especially when you're religious, um, about people who are non-religious and spiritual that gives them that perspective or that per that perception. So just because you are spiritual does not mean that you are a witch, a dark witch, or anything. You don't have to place any labels on yourself. You're just a spiritual person who practice who has spiritual practices to remain focused on your spiritual growth and your ascension here on this plane so you can't you might have to move and re release people places and things that no longer serves you and your, your highest good when you are let's say you grew up you're you have like um toxic family members that are really close to you in, in, in your environment or you grew up with um, really toxic friends or had one really toxic friend or um, you know just someone in your life that has been close to you or in your environment that isn't really good for you every time you're around them um, you're in a bad mood you're getting in trouble and um, maybe your family doesn't like them because they feel like they're bad for you um, maybe it's the one family member who's always being dramatic and you're always butting heads with them and they stolen from you and lied on you and to you and you know like you're always going around and around in circles with this karmic person and there will come a time that the universe will say enough is enough time to move on and you will have to let that person go. And it's going to be hard because it's most likely a person that you have shared many lifetimes with. And it's going to hurt. But the moment you are able to walk away and not look back, that's growth. This whole journey is about growth. It's about seeing yourself from a higher perspective and seeing the world and everything in it from a higher perspective and growing ascending that's what all of this is about yes we use altars and rituals to stay connected to spirit to stay connected to our ancestors it does not make you a dark person it does not make you a bad person it could be something as simple as prayer it's a ritual, it's something that you do often around the clock at the same time, every day, whatever. It's a ritual. And it keeps you close to whoever you are praying to. Um, I always say, like, people who are religious and people who are non religious, like, we practice a lot of the same things and have a lot of the same beliefs. Just some of the things that we believe in, like, it might be the same thing, but in different ways. And some things people are not even aware of that they're doing. Like, having an altar and praying to an ancestor is no different than the church having an altar and praying to Jesus. It's the same thing. But people feel that they put Jesus above themselves, whereas people who are non-religious and spiritual see it's all as one we see it's all as one we don't put anyone before our highest selves which i believe is what the bible says never put anyone before your god and and from my perspective your god is your highest self my 
my two-year-old keeps coming in here making me laugh but um so back to what I was saying about having to let people go I've had to let friends family members go and when I say like I've had to walk away from family members but not like permanently not all of them I've had to go on a journey I had to well I made the decision to move to another town away from my family um, that journey that I went on taught me a lot about myself I learned a lot about loving myself and how much I was allowing myself to pretty much be a pushover and while I was failing in relationships and um, I had to walk away from my family to do that in some cases you have to walk away from your family so that you can grow because they enable you in some cases you have to walk away from your family to grow because they're toxic and they are keeping you stagnant in like the worst way keeping you in low vibration um you might have to you might find that you are you've outgrown your neighborhood maybe you grew up in yeah maybe you grew up in a low-income neighborhood and you find yourself working hard and studying and moving up in the tax bracket and who you are just it doesn't fit you know the people that you hang around or the environment that you live in anymore you want to live in a luxury apartment somewhere in a nice neighborhood and drive a nice car you have elevated past your yeah you have elevated past your environment and so and that's pretty much what spiritual awakening is it is spiritual it's about growth it is about taking care of yourself. It is about learning lessons that you have been trying to learn for lifetimes. And there are people on your path that will try to stop you. And they always say um, new levels bring new devils. So I'm thinking like when you uh, elevate to that next level, it's just a newer talent, a new talent. And um, as long as you stay connected to the universe and your ancestors, you are living and being a good person. Because that's important. Who you are and the type of person that you are being is going to determine how protected you are. If you are doing mean things to people, you are choosing to be dark and uh, work with the dark entities around you. You know, there's one law that we all know of that is real and existing as karma. So it's gonna come back to you no matter how protected you think you are by these dark beings that you are using to help you and giving up sacrifices to you are that karma is going to come back to you in the end and it's not going to be pretty so if you are choosing to do the right thing you're choosing to be a good person you're minding your karma every little thing that you do with the people around you it, i always tell people mind your karma um, nobody's perfect sometimes i get frustrated with people i'm sure i come across a little grumpy and mean at times but especially while pregnant However, um, when it comes to like major, when it comes to like the way I treat people, like the things that I decide to do to people, like I don't decide to go out my way and just like try to make somebody's life miserable. Like that's, that's going to get you some bad karma. It's going to come back to you. You're going to be in a position where somebody's going to try to make your life miserable. And then you're going to feel like there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to have to play it out because that's your karma. So you definitely want to go through this life 
being a good person. That doesn't mean become a doormat and allow people to walk all over you. Stand your ground when you need to stand your ground. Um, stand up for yourself. Um, create healthy boundaries around yourself. However, just make sure that you are being a good person. Even in situations where you feel like you have the opportunity to help someone, but you know like if you help that person, that person's going to come back to bite you in the butt. Like um, a toxic love relationship. You see that this person needs help. This person's coming to you for help. And you feel it in your bones that if you get close to this person, you're going to get caught up in that toxic loop all over again. You don't have to do that. You know, and, um, you can make the choice to protect yourself and your karma in that moment because some people just bring out the worst in us. Like, some people just have you broken down, feeling like a mean, grumpy old woman or man. And you in your early 30s. Hold on now. Stop. Hold on. And they will have you being the person that you don't want to be. Living a way that you don't want to live. All through influence. Like I said, when we're having sex with people, you're putting spells on them, you're putting spells on yourself. You're just pulling yourself deeper into a hole that you may or may not want to be in. And that's why it's so important to get to know people before you decide to lay down with them. Because you get swept off your feet. You get swept off your feet. They get swept off their feet. You get this... um, you're on this high you are like under a spell you're under this person's spell you're under each other's spell and you don't know where it's taking you all you know is that you you're on this cloud you're feeling euphoric and you can't get this person off your mind this person got you feeling really good even if they're treating you like dog shit like <laughs> you don't depending on where you're at on your journey like if you're that naive little girl who don't know better to not deal with someone who's treating you that way and they they got all this money they throwing money in your face they flashing the fancy cars or whatever or they being real smooth and slick and suave you in for it and they will take you on a ride and you know it's all lessons but I I think as long as you get the lesson and you move on to the next level you'll be good but when you've got people that you've been around and around and around on a karmic loop for lifetimes and they're this way it can be detrimental for you, your family that you've created to have that type of energy in your life. You have to pay attention to the things people say, the things that people do, the way they treat you. They will tell you if they care about you or not. And for years, you could be dealing with someone who is constantly showing you they don't care about you and what they say don't match up to what they are doing and you feel confused because you are not listening you are not using your logic mind to see what's really going on and hear what's really being said and if you're feel if you're a very insecure person you will be taken for a ride i mean if you're insecure, you're ignoring your intuition, you're ignoring all the red flags, all the signs, you're going to go on that karmic loop and it will eat you alive and eventually you'll get the lesson, 
but with a lot of people, it takes a lot of time on that karmic loop to get that lesson and like really take heed and use their logic mind and step back and say, okay, I don't care how much I care about this person, I love this person, I know they don't feel the same way about me and I gotta protect me. And a lot of times people will make you feel guilty about that. You will hear so much on your spiritual journey. Oh, you're changing. You're being different. You're selfish. Yes. Be selfish. Because be selfish in a way that you will protect yourself from people who don't appreciate you and people who will pull, drag you down. Be selfish in that way. Don't be selfish towards good people who don't deserve it. However, I mean, and I can't tell you what to do. I'm trying to break out of the habit of telling people what to do. Because I want my channel to be more about just being a positive influence and not like preaching to people and telling you who you should be, how you should be, whatever. That's up to you. It's completely your choice. I'm just saying, you want to be, it's good to be selfish in a healthy way. And you're going to have to block all that out. It takes blocking all that out to, to make it through all these different stages. There's so many different stages. And for me, I've been on like seven year cycles where my healing journey for one thing might start one year and end in seven years. I finally get the lessons and finally completely heal whatever it was I was trying to heal pertaining to that and that seven years but we never stop growing so then there's something else to heal and something else to learn and that might be another seven year cycle so I'm trying to enjoy my journey as much as possible I want to learn about all the spiritual practices that will keep me grounded and feeling good and on a high and allow myself to go through the dark night of the soul moments and just learn as much as I can from them whenever they occur whenever things pop up about myself and just really like analyze you know analyze myself like this is something that I thought I've always thought about since I was a child but I never really made an effort to actually work on it and change it and now that it's in your face through your children through your spouse or whoever you have the opportunity to change it I have a child that is just like me I mean me from the time I was a child and like a mirror this child is a mirror for me and I see the things that I fuss at him about all the time every day same thing and I know that it's something I've struggled with since I was a child and I've been working on it and I tell myself you know what I'm going to love this child as hard as I can because that's going to be healing for me and my inner child for all the things all of the things that happen to me that caused me to not love myself and caused me to feel like something was wrong with me I was too emotional or um, even the things that I want that I feel like I should change about myself that I'm learning through my child I'm going to change it and keep it moving I'm going to work on it and keep it moving and I'm going to love this child as hard as I can without getting in the way of his evolution and his growth and that is going to be very healing for me and my inner child I had a conversation with some co-workers about this and we all talked about how we all have that one child it's just 
that one child that is just so hard, like you just crash all the time and it's like there's a lesson to be learned here and I wanna learn it. <laughs> I wanna figure it out, work on it and pass the test, all the tests and I just I just wanna evolve, man. Like I'm so far from the person that I started out as. And that's life. That's really just how life goes. But you do meet a lot of people who are like 60, 70 years old and they're the same person that they were in their 20s to an extent. Some, not all people choose to grow. You can meet a very immature 50 year old that refuses to see themselves for who they truly are. And you can meet the most humble, the most serene person. Calm, peaceful, wise, because they got the lessons. So, that is going to conclude this video. I, um, I have so much to talk about. Like, I have so much that I think about, and I'll be like, God, I need to pull out my camera and, like, really talk about this and just get it on out. I feel really good when I get on camera and talk about this stuff. Um, there's a lot of things that I spoke on that I didn't really get into detail about that I would love to just kind of like break down um, but I know that whole thing with like people hearing that you're non-religious but spiritual and just like feeling like they know who you are because of what they heard that has been like a big pet peeve for me for a while um but I know we are misrepresented, so I try to keep that in mind, but um, it is hurtful to feel that you're being judged in that way, you know? Until next time, which hopefully will be soon.